you please stand as we sing hymn number 125 from the Red Hymn. especially if you're visiting today or joining us for the first time today and all those who are at home and just to remind you if you are at home that we're here and ready for you when you're happy uh, to come back trying to keep people safe here maintaining spacious places at the back wearing masks and praying for you uh, earnestly wherever you are so in a few moments of stillness We'll call to mind those who can't be with us physically uh, today, and then we will pray the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. 
in your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall do, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we stand to sing God's praise with the glory in excelsis. Search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit as we hear from Scripture. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live and to enter and occupy the land of the Lord God of your ancestors is given you. You must neither add anything to what I command, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, in which I am charging you. Verse 6. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to all the peoples, who, when they hear of these statutes, will say, Surely this is a great nation with wise and discerning people. And for what great nation a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances? ordinances 
as just an as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from James and can be found on page 245. James 1, beginning at verse 17. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfilment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by his word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, that everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank, growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look upon themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be a blessing in their doing. If anything thou religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but conceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep one unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. you please stand for the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 
In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defy a person. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please sit. Right now, at the gates of an airport 4,500 miles away, crowds, including widows and orphans, are jostling and being slaughtered. A sea of people surges in waves of desperation, as thousands upon thousands attempt to flee a regime of brutality, a regime of extreme legalism in the name of religion. Now the British planes have gone. In two days time, the last planes will have flown, uh, the gates will be sealed, and many will be left to their fate in the hands of the Taliban. At one person, who stayed to the end with the, uh, with the British forces is a, is a former Colchester schoolboy, um, Laurie Bristow, uh, the British uh, uh, ambassador to Afghanistan. And he remained there uh, processing visas and trying to maximise the number that might escape right until the end. To those who were moved by those scenes, to think first of protecting what they have, to claim the issues of resource, or to suspicion of the foreigner, our gentle, loving, merciful Saviour says, look again, look again. Do not let your hearts be hardened. In Mark's Gospel, from which our passage today is taken, Jesus is regularly roused to compassion or righteous anger by the hardness of hearts. He comes to melt hearts, to open arms, to get compassion flowing. Now, I have no idea uh, what Laurie Bristow's faith may or may not be, but his presence to the end is one imperfect example of a softened heart amid a desperate situation. And we come here to worship God, and when we do so, we need to acknowledge the difficult but wonderful truth that those who truly follow Jesus, those who take up his cross and follow, abandon selfishness, and sometimes that brings them into worldly danger and jeopardy and terror. Uh, James, in his epistle, describes that sort of Christian life as doing the word. Be doers of the word, he writes, and not merely hearers. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. To care for orphans and widows in their distress. All faiths, all ideas, can be twisted into tools of violence. The Taliban's extreme legalistic corruption of Islam 
should serve as a reminder to us, because history shows that Christianity can be and has been distorted into the most destructive of weapons. But Jesus, the Son of God, gifts us a test, a test that we can apply to ourselves and to others to see whether we are doing the word or whether we are hypocrites, projecting some a false image of holiness for our own benefit. And it's a test that stands over all corruptions of the Christian faith. Simplistic, legalistic, unreflective, holier-than-thou Christianity is an easy sell, but it is not the life of faith to which Jesus has called us. He calls us to a more perfect simplicity, a perfect simplicity of a relationship of faith with God through him, not the brutal simplicity of selective texts or legal codes raised to the status of God. But it's not the case that all law or moral codes uh, or standards and practices are, are wrong. Read the Gospels carefully and you find that Jesus' relationship with Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, all those associated with the ancient Jewish law is much more close and complicated. We can't just say it's them versus us. And when he says, I am the end of the law, that is a word that means not just the end of something, but the perfection of something. Jesus says, if you want to know what the law was pointing to, it's in front of you, it's me. But he gives us this test so that we can distinguish between uh, legalism, I mean by that just doing some religious stuff so that we look holy or for power, and real faithfulness, real faithfulness. And that test arrives in the Gospel today when Jesus is talking with scribes and Pharisees. They are the uh, metropolitan elite, the religious authorities that have travelled out from Jerusalem to see what this Jesus fuss is about. The disciples are in Gennesaret and they're about to go with Jesus into non-Jewish territory and there the Jewish rituals and laws are not practiced. Now, whatever the reason, or for whatever reason, the disciples aren't, at that point, practicing the usual Jewish rituals around eating. That's hand washing, uh, cups, uh, and pot washing. And understandably, uh, these impressive visitors are unimpressed. Uh, to them, those rituals, those things they do, are a sign of faithfulness and obedience. The disciples know that they have a different sort of faithfulness and obedience to God because they are with Jesus. And when these uh, uh, Pharisees and, and scribes challenge Jesus, he is roused, he's moved once again by their hardness of heart. And I think he's troubled that they haven't considered why the disciples might be acting in this way. What was the intention behind what they were doing? So he turns their words back on them and he accuses them of, of hijacking these Jewish rituals purely as a way of appearing holier than thou. And it's then that Jesus gives us this test. He says what matters is this, intention. What is the reason, the source, the goal, the objective for our words and our actions. Uh, intentions matter. If uh, I bump into you uh, on Lexington Road uh, and uh, you're knocked to the floor, if that happens accidentally, that is not wrong. But I promise I'll never do this. <laughs> if I were to pretend to accidentally bump into you in the street with the intention of knocking you over and getting away with it, that I think we'd agree is, is wrong. Now outwardly, exactly the same thing would happen. You would see the same thing. The difference is in here, the intention. The crucial phrase that James uses in, in, in that sentence, be doers of the word and not merely hearers, isn't actually doers, and it's not hearers, 
It is the word, the word. If we do the word, that means we are doing what Jesus wants us to do, that our intention is what Jesus would want for us. And so as we read right across the New Testament, and you've got the whole New Testament in front of you here, uh, religious law and action in the name of faith uh, should never be done for its own sake, nor for our sake. Religious action or moral codes and practices are done for the sake of the word, of the word, Jesus. And so we have this test that stands in judgment over all forms of religious legalism, but without dismissing all forms of religious law. It stands in judgment over uh, the Taliban, I think, and over the Christian extreme legalism, and it also stands in judgment over me and you. Do my actions and my words relate to the word? When they do, I think they relate to everybody I'm interacting with to that word, to Jesus. Is my integrity, the uh, consistency of my values and my life, is that based really on Jesus, the word? Do I honour Jesus in how I live, act and speak? Now I know that I fall short of this from time to time. In fact, I fall short of that very often, as everybody does. So my daily prayer is that I might do the word. I might do the word. Jesus' very clever response to the Pharisees uh, is this. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. That means that how we express ourselves and what we do, those things matter. They need to honour him. And otherwise, to use Jesus' language, we're defiled. If we don't do that, we damage ourselves. We neglect the gift that God has given us and that is within us. Now, as the church, even in these times, there are many ways that we are doing the word now, together, all of us. A junior church leading us to become an eco-church. Um, our bereavement support group starting up again this week. A project to help um, repair bikes starting on Monday week. That's a way to bring people together and help them, help them to be healthier in a time when many, many people are suffering massively financially. They can come and get their bikes fixed with us. Our friendship lunches, our baby and toddler group, our charitable collection, the show we're planning for later in the year where we can come together and enjoy each other's skills, our life skills course, the list goes on and on and thank God it does. And the point is, whether they prove popular or not, what matters is whether we are doing them to honour the word or whether we are doing them to make ourselves look good. And that is a challenge I would put to every congregation and every church. Are you doing the stuff for Jesus or doing the stuff uh, for profile? Why are we doing this stuff? Now, I am pretty confident that we're doing this stuff because we want to do the word. But I also know we must keep asking ourselves that question. So I encourage us, all of us, to do the word. And if you want to be involved in these projects, um, get in touch and we'll see if we can um, help you to be involved. But you can do the word just by honouring Jesus and how you interact, how you speak, those things you do. Back at the airport, and back at the border points, the chaos remains right now. How aware are those widows and orphans and aliens that we want to do the word here in Lexington? Don't let your hearts be hardened. We need to be hospitable, compassionate, welcoming and supportive. We need to challenge prejudice online, in newspapers, at the pub, at work. And further down the line, we must ask ourselves hard questions about how we arrive at this situation. When I talk in terms of, of Afghanistan, it might seem that what we do here is an insignificant drop in the ocean. Pointless. Well, it isn't. It isn't, because 
One, we're able to directly support some of the work going on to aid those seeking refuge. We are a major donor to English for Women, which is a really important uh, project for uh, many refugee women in Chelmsford. And by truly seeking to do the word here, by fixing bikes and making lunches and welcoming children, our softness of heart, our openness, can soften the hearts around us. Everybody we meet can have their heart softened by us if we go out with a soft heart, if we go out and show them that prejudice is wrong, if we go out and show that self-sacrifice is not some uh, economic stupidity but the way God wants us to live in love. And like ripples across a pond, that compassion will spread out not because we're holy, not because we're clever, because we love the word and we want to do the word. So be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. Amen. And I invite you to stand as we say the creed together. We believe in one God, Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten. to God the Father. Do you please sit. Loving God, we pray, we pray for all places of violence and injustice. And this morning we hold before you in particular the people of Afghanistan. Amid chaos and a lack of clarity, we cry out for mercy and compassion. Show us ways in which we can work to do your word. May those who suffer know the presence of your Son with them. Draw our nation, the nations of the world and Afghanistan, into your loving justice and peace, we pray. We pray for our armed forces who have been deployed there, many of them from this town of Colchester. We pray for them and for their families and friends. 
asking your protection upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the body of Christ, the Church. May we do the Word. May our intentions be those of the Son of God. Go before us and guide us in all our doings and sayings. We pray for the Church of England, for Archbishop Justin, for our bishops Gully and Roger, for our Archdeacon Ruth, and the many lay people who helped to run this diocese. Bless the churches of Colchester and this parish of Lexton. Help us to be salt and light, to be humble, compassionate, to serve those of this parish and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we hold before you all those in any form of need at this time. A few moments of stillness, we hold before you those who are on our hearts. Among those who are in need, we remember by name Max, Mary, Ashley, Jill, Jan, Tony, Shirley, Stella, Mandy and Paul, Dory, Betty, Sheila, Carol, Joan, Graham, Tim, Holly, Tony, Margaret, Jasmine, Kathy, Wynne, Frida and Ernest, Jean, John, John, Hilary and Ellen, Pam, Florence, Ellen, Angus, Chris, Rosemary, and Darling. May your son, the great physician of our souls, be near to them in the need and bring wholeness and restoration. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we give thanks for all who have gone before us and shown us good examples of the life of faith. As your son mourned his friend, he is with those who mourn at this time. We hold before you those adjusting to life without a loved one. And remembering the promises your son has won for the faithful, we remember those who have died, and among them, John, John, Maureen, Mary, Jenny, Peter, Mary, Richard and Sister Helen Julie. <coughs> in the wideness of your mercy, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now for the sake of, of those visiting us today, and for the sake of me, because I've just come back from leave, I'm going to remind myself what happens as we distribute the communion. We shall use Eucharistic prayer B today, which we'll eventually get to uh, on uh, page 10, and the stewards will show you when it's time to 
come forward, and we're coming forward in, in single file um, to uh, receive um, the sacrament as a consecrated bread. There is a uh, hand gel there if you like to uh, use it. It comes out in vast quantities, so use it uh, sparingly, I would um, advise. Uh, we come forward and uh, receive from the middle and then return to our seats following the blue arrows that are up. Uh, we're also are going to come to our offertory prayer uh, in uh, a moment. And uh, I want to uh, thank uh, everybody for the many ways that they're helping us all to do the word here. And much of our giving has moved online uh, and thank you uh, so much for that. Those who aren't able to give online, there are still ways of doing it. There is a collection plate at the back and we have now uh, a card uh, leading machine at the back which I uh, commend to you. So as I prepare uh, the altar, I invite you uh, to a time of prayer. Before that time of prayer, part of my brain is still on holiday. Before that time of prayer, I think it's important that we share the peace, given what I've just tried to um, preach about. So, if you're comfortable to, would you please stand for the peace? And Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, they shall be called children of God. We meet in his name and we share his peace. And so, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Sorry, sorry. Would you please stand? So calling to mind all the gifts that we give to God, we say together the prayer on the bottom of page 9. Gracious God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise. 
praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you our holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Lennon, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from Monday or Tuesday, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
God our Creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, uh, firstly, just to say how lovely it is to uh, have people uh, with us today who might be visiting or here. Uh, for the first time or the first time in a, a while. It's always a delight uh, to welcome people uh, here. Uh, it's not like autumn for the last couple of days, but today it feels like spring. And that is a wonderful thing that uh, is filling me with hope. And many of the things I've described, uh, the stuff that we do to worship God, uh, are about to start springing forth uh, once uh, again. Uh, the baby and toddler group, I think, starts this week, Wednesday. No, it starts the Wednesday after this one, sorry. Uh, but that is, uh, has been oversubscribed and is likely to be oversubscribed uh, 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 again. Uh, the uh, bereavement group, uh, I believe, is starting up again uh, this week. And uh, please hold all those uh, that will attend and uh, those who will leave that group uh, in uh, your uh, prayers and if you know people that might benefit uh, from that sort of thing uh, do put them in touch with uh, Margaret. Uh, men's breakfast returns uh, on Saturday uh, the 4th and it's going to we hope return every first Saturday from now on. Uh, it involves bacon for those who like bacon and chatting and coffee for those who like chatting and coffee and a good uh, company. It starts at 8.30, and I think we're doing it in the hall this time, uh, and it'd be a good thing to come to because you can fill yourself up with calories and then help us with our spring clean, uh, which we're uh, going to do uh, that morning, September the 4th. Julie uh, uh, and Kathleen and others are, and I'll be here. We'll be uh, getting everything as spick and span uh, as we can here. Uh, there are many other things, I'm going to make sure you know about them. Dr. Bike. Uh, Dr. Bike is being run by Cycling UK in conjunction with Coach the Cat Net Centre and St. Leonard's. It starts on the 6th of September. It aims to help people get back on their bikes, um, to uh, get healthy and to be uh, more green in a good way. And uh, 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 you uh, can just uh, come along please, if you can, uh, email uh, Sean if you'd like to come along. It's aimed at people that might not normally be able to get to a, a bike shop to have these things done. It's very exciting and we're looking forward to uh, that starting. The other thing that everybody's looking forward to is a return to school. Uh, so, and <clears throat> speaking to the parents. No. Uh, next uh, Sunday, uh, in this service, we will be celebrating our young people and the great gift of all the schools that we have a connection with. There are presently three schools in the parish, another one with a long and deep running association with the parish. Our young people go to secondary schools all over the place. I won't get you to put your hands up, but I know there's at least four school governors here. There are teachers, ex-teachers. We are going to be holding before God uh, these great institutions, one of the few institutions left in this country that actually gather people uh, together. And we're going to be praying for your blessing and protection. So if you happen to have a school bag, please bring it along and we'll bless that. Or you can bring a school planner or just bring your 
So, and I may even read some selected excerpts from my own school reports to inspire you to a standard of behaviour that was beyond me. But it's our faithfulness that matters. Uh, we are trying to uh, bring things uh, back in a, in a sensible and well-planned way. Uh, our 8 a.m. Book of Common Prayer Holy Communion service returns next Sunday at 8 a.m. Uh, we're going in September to uh, see how that works on the first and the third uh, Sunday, just to check how our arrangements are working. On the second Sunday, we will be having a service of Evensong here at 5.30, 5.30, uh, not uh, 6.30. Also on the 5th of September, uh, we're hoping that uh, uh, Johnny uh, Gardner, uh, who's been coming here during lockdown, will be uh, confirmed at St Mary's Kelvin. I used to think it was bad if the notices were too long. You probably still do. I think this is a sign of, of spring and doing uh, the word. So, uh, in a moment we will uh, sing our uh, final hymn, we'll sing it before the final blessing. It's number 613 in the blue hymn books. Now it's called Purify My Heart, and as you sing it, I'd like you to think that purifying means softening and opening, softening and opening your heart. So in the blue hymn book we stand to sing hymn number 631. 31, 6, 3, 1. outside the uh, building we're using the exit uh, to my uh, left here and then if we can keep the paths clear so that those who need to keep their distance can and then do please catch up if you want to and so for God's blessing the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve them. In the name of Christ. Amen.